This is a follow-up and updated version of a previous video where I showed you how to use states in Flex Builder 3. Now I'm going to show you how the new way works that the Flex team have done it in Flash Builder 4. There's a, a lot of changes here, uh, but I think, you know, like with myself, once you start to play with it, you'll realize that these changes actually are for the best and they do actually help keep the code a lot simpler and things a lot easier to see on the screen. So what we've got here is just a basic application I've started. We have a label control with an ID of text label and I've just put a text string of a text string on there. I also have a button control with an ID of button edit text and just a label of edit text. So what I'm going to do here, you know, is let's just say that you wanted to have a situation where someone can hit the button, a little uh, input box is going to come up here on the screen, you can edit the text and hit the button to be done. So what we're going to do is go up here as we did in the previous versions and add a new state. I'm just going to call this editing text. It'll be based on the state one, the default state, and go OK. So nothing looks any different now. So let's go ahead and make our changes. We're in editing text. Well, what I want to happen is I'm going to want this button to be in a different location and because I want to make some room for this extra control that I'm going to add here and I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to get the text input and I'm just going to drag it onto the screen there and line it up. I'll go ahead and give it an ID of text input and there we are. So nothing looks any different there but however let's go over to the source code view and you'll notice that unlike previous versions where we had that separate section of code that listed states, now we just have a states section here that lists the different names and the actual changes take place inside the control here. So on the text input, for example, you'll see that I have this include in equals editing text. So that's new. What that's saying is only include it in the editing text state. Only make it visible. Let us see it. And you'll also notice that because the button appears in both states, in state 1, the default, it has its X and Y. However, here's the new way of doing things. And you'll notice that you know it's going to use dot syntax, which you'll get used to very quickly. It's a great way to work with states. We're going to say that the X value, and using the dot syntax dot in the editing text state, is going to have a different value. And the same with the Y. So there's the new thing there. You know, take a look at that. This is the way it works with all the properties. So it's going to be, you know, x dot state name and then equals 367. Now, with that in mind, you know, let's think about this logically here. Let's go back to the design view. When I'm in the editing mode, well, I don't want this button to say edit text. I might want it to say done editing, for example. So very simply, we'll just go over to the source here. And we'll say, okay, you know, we know a label control a button has a label, which is label.edit text. So what we'll do is we'll use a new syntax and say label dot and notice it brings up using the IntelliSense there, the name of the state, and I'm gonna select editing text equals done editing. So now when we're in that state, that's gonna be the what appears on the on the button. Done editing. There you go, see? We'll just go back to state one and you'll see that it says edit text there. So I'll just go back to editing text. I'll just realign that control. Now at the moment, of course, you know, nothing's going to happen when we click on this button. So we need a way to work between these two states. So I'll go back to state one and I'm going to select the button here. Going to go down to the on click handler, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with. However, there's something new here. We can actually use the new one here and generate the event handler for us. Saves us typing some code. It's going to generate the handler. All I need to do here now is put in my code to change states. So I'm going to say this dot current state equals editing text. And I'll go back to design view. And now what I'm going to do is say, OK, let's go ahead and push the button here to debug. We'll just bring it up in a browser. There we have our text string. I'm going to hit the edit text. We'll switch over to the other state, the editing text state. The button label has changed and the text box has appeared. Now, of course, clicking on this button at the moment is not going to do anything, so we need to fix that. And just like with everything else, with this new dot syntax in states, we can go over to editing text going to click on done editing. Here's an interesting little gotcha. We don't have an, 
an on-click state here. If I click here though and go generate event handler, it's a little bit of a screw up here because we already have one in the default state. You would have thought that they would have it set so that it would know this and that it would generate a new event handler. So, you know, sadly we have to sort of fix this problem here. So I'm just going to select and copy that to save typing out some code. And I'm going to paste it here. Now what I need to do, of course, I need to give it a different name. So this function is going to have a different name. I'll put on the end here, editing. So now what I'm going to do is go down to the button here. You know, as before, scroll across here. You'll see that click.state1, call this event handler, and click.editing text, it's going to call the same event handler. Again, I don't want to call it a bug. It's just a little bit of a weird gotcha there that hopefully they'll correct. So I'm just going to change the name here of the function we're going to call in the editing text state. So now we have click.editing text and it's going to call the click handler editing function. This one up here. Now of course we need to change this and say OK. When I'm in the edit edit text handler here and in the editing text state, I want to just use an empty quote there to go back to the default state, which will be state one. So now when I click edit text, we go into the mode where you could put some text in and click just clear that out because we don't have anything to actually change this text stream before anyone writes in and complains. So done editing goes back. So basically I've just wired up the button to switch between the two different states. And let's just close that. So that's how we do states the new way in Flash Builder 4. It seems a little bit awkward at first if you're used to doing it the old way, but there's new dot syntax of being able to specify, you know, properties followed by the state name for that pro and then setting the property value is actually a really good way of doing things. And I think that once you get used to it, you know, it'll become natural and I think it's a better way and it's a it's a nice improvement. I just wish that they didn't have this weird little gotcha that it will with the functions here when you create the handlers, but hopefully they'll fix that soon.